Hello and welcome to the Chemit webinar on our small size components. My name is Alexander Nebel and I will moderate the webinar today. We are very pleased that you find the time to join our webinar. Presenter today is Jekaterina Stael von Holstein, our field application engineer in Central Europe. Hello Jekaterina, thank you for presenting today. Please tell the audience shortly about your role inside Chemit and then you can directly start your presentation. Thank you, Alex. Um, hello, everyone. My name is Jekaterina Steil von Holstein, and I am Chemet Field Application Engineer in Central Europe, as was already mentioned by Alex. Today, we will talk about solutions for space constrained applications, and by that, we mean surface mount technology. Of course, there are always space restrictions in our applications, either in width or which appears even more often in height, as all devices show one trend to be as slim as possible, to fit as much functions as possible in one device and to be efficient and fast. In this webinar, we will talk about surface mount capacitors and their advantages and disadvantages in comparison to the through-hole technology. Moreover, I will give you an overview of the different surface mount capacitors uh, in comparison to each other. And at the end, I will give you examples how you can choose the right technology for your application. So let us start with the first topic, the advantages and disadvantages of surface mount technology, um, of capacitors especially, in comparison to the through-hole technology. But before I continue, I would like to highlight that I will talk about the technology in general, which will not consider necessarily Kemet products. So to begin with, there are always things which have to be taken uh, care of while planning to use surface mount capacitors. One of them <clears throat> is the electrostatic discharge for all small SMD components. Due to multiple build processes of the board, uh, testings, inspections, pack packaging, shippings, especially SMD components are susceptible to ESD. So this is also why for some capacitors, ESD ratings are required as they have to not fail under ESD pulses in the field. The second issue which has to be considered is the low heat capacity. Because the SMD elements are put with the surface directly on the board, uh, the temperature of the part rises and prevents the heat from dissipation. This leads to higher temperature of the component and therefore to its worth of to, uh, perf um, performance regarding ESR and ESL values. And of course, the operational lifetime is shortened. Um, the higher the SMD component, the more likely it needs additional fixation. So, um, the, the higher the component, the more it needs uh, additional fixation for stability, especially also for vibrations. All given disadvantages concern surface mount technology in general and not necessarily uh, only SMD components. Um, each technology itself has its own advantages and disadvantages on their own. So on the advantage list, we have lower ESL and ESR values as no leads are required in comparison to the three-hole technology. To the more optimized uh, manufacturing process, the SMD components can be produced in higher numbers in the same time as THG components, which lowers the cost for the most technologies. But of course, the main advantage is what we are concentrating on. As a, uh, it is smaller, um, a smaller technology, it is space efficient, uh, and we have a higher circuit density. Regarding the height, it is not even necessary really to compare THG versus uh, surface mount technology, as the SMT technology will always be more narrow than THG. But of course, there are differences in height regarding uh, the technology. 
So presuming that we have the same capacitance for all following considerations, the THG logic product will be the highest. It is followed by SMD standard logic and changing to a slightly different technology with hybrid, we already have only the half of our height. The standard tantalum SMD technology has even lower profile, which is followed by polymer tantalum technology. But of course we have a small height, but because we have only a small height, uh, we cannot just bring a technology into our application. So here is an overview of the whole Comet capacitor portfolio, THD and SMD uh, regarding voltage and capacity values. And already here we can see that for low capacitances but higher voltages, MLCC is the best technology, while for higher capacitances and lower voltages um, we should choose um, aluminium. Well, voltage and capacitance is, are not the only parameters uh, which have to be taken care of. Uh, this is why in the following I will talk about each of uh, the technologies um, in general and then there will be an overview of the advantages and disadvantages of the SMD technology in comparison to other SMD technologies. And also here, I would like to highlight that all advantages and disadvantages are in general, and we are not talking about the facts of chemical products, but uh, about the technologies themselves. So let us start with um, MLCCs, the most common SMD capacitor. Here we have a variety of uh, possibilities how this technology can be used. Also, SMD ceramics can be used as safety caps and there are special anti-arching and ESD components. Besides, low loss performance with extremely low ESR and high self-resonance characteristic for RF and microwave applications are on the market. Next to standard MLCCs like COG and X7R um, and other series, we also have Connect technology on the market. This technology allows via centering to put several capacitors in parallel using the same footprint. And this is how we can raise the capacitance density. Also high voltage series, crack protection series like flex terminal or open mode um, and um, high temperature technologies um, assure that we can choose the best technology for our desired application. So what do we have to take care of when we plan to include MLCCs on our board? First of all, class two ceramics and lower class ceramics tend to have piezo noise. Besides, as already mentioned, MLCCs do not offer high capacitances and especially for class two ceramics, D rating has high impact um, on the performance of the capacitor. Moreover, a tombstone effect for small case sizes have to be taken care of which affect mostly MLCCs due to the very small case size after the soldering process. So one terminal is not connected prob properly to the PCB and this is the reason why the MLCC is put into vertical position. Um, on the other hand, MLCCs have a big amount of advantages which lead to the very common appearance in applications due to high automatization process as already mentioned, especially for MLCCs we have relatively low cost and the lifetime is the longest, um, the greatest among all other capacitor technologies. The voltage levels are also very high and another very attractive point are the high frequencies, which is the reason why they are commonly used in wideband gap applications. 
Well, also not to forget the high temperatures and uh, the most important point is also that they can be used for both for AC and for DC applications. Let us now come to tantalum technology. This technology has a very low profile for SMD component 0.8 millimeter and is the best when it comes to replace MLCCs. When we talk about tantalum technology, we mean a voltage range of up to 100 volt and a capacitance of up to 2 millifarad. We have to distinguish between two technology types, the standard mangan dioxide uh, tantalum and the polymer tantalum, where the anode is the same, which is a porous tantalum pellet, but the cathode is for polymer, not mangan dioxide, but a conductive polymer material. And this leads to several benefits of the polymer technology. Um, well, first of all, we have a, a safe um, failure case um, in case of currents through fault and also less failures occur, but also the ESR is lower. We have higher capacitance values um, uh, which can be reached and we have also a smaller case size and also higher rated voltage le uh, levels can be reached as we operate the polymer between 80 and 90% of the rated voltage, while for mangan dioxide, we need to go to 50% of rated voltage. And this is why due to lower voltage D rating, uh, for a five volt application, uh, we would need um, a six volt polymer, smaller tantalum, instead of a bigger 10 volt mangan dioxide tantalum. So first, what are the issues with this technology? As already mentioned, we always have to consider that we need to operate the tantalums at lower voltage levels than the rated voltage. And besides, mangan dioxide um, does not have uh, a safe failure mode. So um, as in case of a crack, we have an oxidation process. This does not consider polymers as there the failure mode is safe and we do not have any oxidation, not, at least not a big oxidation. The, uh, the prices for tantalum um, are higher, but considering that they replace, can replace more than one MLCC, uh, this compensates already the price. And the ESR in DC leakage current uh, values are relatively high. I also have to mention that those values are for, for polymer uh, 10 times lower. Um, the highest operational voltage for the tantalums are around 75 volt and they can only be used for DC applications due to polarization. Now let's take a look at the various advantages of this technology. We have very low profiles, um, for example, as already mentioned, 0 0.8 millimeter and the capacitance which can be reached is relatively high. This technology saves a lot of space on the PCB regarding the footprint and also the height, and also cracks can be self-healed. The price is relative to C to the savings and in comparison to the following mentioned technologies, the humidity capability nowadays is good and the soldering temperatures are, can be high. The next technology we will talk about are aluminium logic capacitors. Here today, um, there's a variety of different technologies uh, using aluminium foil. So we have liquid logic, we have polymer logic where the electrolyte is a conductive polymer. We have hybrid where a conjunction of polymer and wet logic is used. And also we have on the market aluminium polymer chip capacitors, the so-called AO caps. Um, um, aluminium organic capacitors at Kamet. Um, I would like to tell something about these capacitors. Um, they are in a tantalum case and are available between 2 and 25 volt and the capacitance values are between 6.8 and 560 microfarad. 
It is therefore better to compare AO caps with uh, polymer tantalum capacitors as they have ultra low ESR and operate also in the similar ratings. But let us now come to a comparison between the three typical lytic SMD constructions, um, liquid lytic, polymer and hybrid. The liquid lytic has the best price. The polymer lytic has the best ripple current and life characteristic, while the performance of frequency and temperature is the best for hybrids. So in the following advantages and disadvantages lists, we put all the mentioned lytic technologies together and compare them to other capacitor technologies. The perception is therefore a little distorted. Nevertheless, some characteristics are the same for all lytic products. So the issues are generally speaking, speaking the high ESR, dissipation of wet electrolytes, lower ripple current capability, smaller lifetime for especially SMD products due to dissipation and also due to the height lower vibration stability. But especially for the last mentioned point, uh, we have um, a solution which is an anti-vibration plate. It allows 30G to be exerted versus the standard 5G. Um, as already mentioned, the low cost are the biggest advantage of this technology and the high capacitance density. As all other pros and cons I already mentioned for, for the different technologies, we will just go on with the next technology, the surface mount film. And film is mostly common as through hole technology box or can but also SMT can be found on the market. So of course, there are differences in foil technology, which leads also to the decision, uh, what is the best technology, film technology for my application. For example, PPS and PAM are for high temperatures, but also uh, for surface mount technology, we have stacked and wound versions. Um, stacked are for high currents, while the wound are for high voltages. Um, naked products are more compact, but they need extra treatment in order to withstand reflow processes. Typical applications for SMD film capacitors are filtering, timing circuit stable and temperature, desealing and low power applications, coupling and oscillating circuit stable and frequency. Um, surface mount film have one big disadvantage. They are expensive and are relative big. So, on the contrary, we have a lot of benefits, which are operation at high voltages uh, with high capacitances. We have self-healing as for all film products, low dissipation factor, high DVDTs, high mechanical strain, and they can be used for DC and AC applications. Just to complete the capacitor series, also supercapacitors are available as surface mount technology. Supercaps are used for backups for 30 minutes, one hour or longer. For example, in digital tuning systems and microcomputers. And the issues are the same for all supercaps that they have low voltages, can be operated only at lower temperatures and uh, they can be only applied for DC applications. But of course, the high capacitance and um, is the highest benefit and also that they can be used instead, in some cases, instead of batteries um, is a great benefit. This is also why supercaps do not have many overlappings with other technologies. Let us see what is the best technology using an example. We need a bypass capacitor with the following requirements. 
4.7 microfarad, 25 volt, at temperature 125 uh, degrees C. The bypassing frequency is 96 kilohertz and we need an automotive component. So to sum it up, low voltage, middle capacitance, high temperature, middle bypassing frequency. If we take a look at our overview at visual search uh, of components edge uh, from the Comet website, we can see that for 25 volt and 4.7 microfarad, we have a variety of uh, technologies to choose. Um, of course, we do not want to have through hole technology, uh, but um, we are left with MLCC, with liquid lytic, and with both tantalum technologies. So now we see an overview and we already can see 105 degrees C. degrees C is a little bit too low, so we cannot choose wet lytic anymore. Um, on the other hand, if we would have some cooling in the system, this would be maybe also uh, a good decision. For the tantalum capacitors, we need also to take care of the rated voltage. So we need to choose 35 volt component for a 25 volt application, as well as 50 volt um, standard tantalum um, um, for 50 volt for standard tantalum. Um, in comparison to 25 our um, standard rated voltage. So what do we do now? Now we need to compare the technologies according and therefore I used our Kamen simulation tool KSM 3.0 uh, where I can also put the DC bias and the ambient temperature and I can already see that for these components I would need nine MLCCs to fulfill the requirements. Now if we take a look at the price also considering uh, how many parts we need um, and I look the prices up at a distribution web page. So it's just approximate how much more one component would cost than uh, another component. Our uh, wet lytic would have been the best decision. It would have been um, the best in price. Um, because we have nine MLCCs, we have 20 times of the lytic uh, 20 times of uh, the logic price. The price for the polymer tantalum is seven times higher and uh, for standard, the price for the standard tantalum is only three times higher. Uh, but I would like to consider that the polymer tantalum is only has only the half of the footprint of the mangan dioxide tantalum and also the height is a little bit lower so um, maybe this is worth a thought to be to build uh, the whole application a little bit smaller let us continue with another example our capacitance is now 10 times higher with 47 microfarad and we have additional restriction in height for six millimeters. With a rough look at our components from our components edge with a visual search, we are offered uh, a variety of technologies, also now including polymer lutic and film lutic. So, now I did a comparison also regarding the performance in the different technologies and we even though we have for wet lytic a 125 degree C component the height is too high. The same is also for the film GSN. Um, now we are left with these technologies and here we would need um, two polymer tantalum as well as two standard tantalum to fulfill the requirements and six bigger MLCCs than in the example before. And this is how our, um, our prices are rising. We would need 1.5 times higher price for the polymer logic, but it's still the best uh, decision for our requirements. Um, the 
and all other technologies have a pretty high price. So this is why the winner of this competition is our Polymer Lutic um, SMD capacitor. Um, so what is the conclusion of this webinar? Surface mount technologies have smaller voltage and capacitance values in comparison to the three-hole technology due to heat distribution in the component. Therefore, especially for high temperature um, operations, the range of available voltage and capacitance is lower due to heat losses. It is logical that the advantages and disadvantages of each technology can be transmitted from through-hole technology to surface mount. And this is why the rating of temperature and frequency behavior has to be included into the considerations. Before deciding for one technology, look closely on other opportunities. Other technologies may meet the requirements way better and be even more cost efficient. And if you are not sure, if you need technical advice or support, or if you want to find out more about Comet products, do not hesitate to ask your Comet field application engineer or product manager. So for this, thank you very much for your attention and attending the webinar. My name is Ekaterina Steyl von Holstein. And now, Alex, I look forward for your questions. Yes, thank you, Ekaterina. It was very interesting and I could see some questions. And um, actually, there's one question which came twice. Um, so oh. I will just repeat it, um, comparing the tantalum polymer and the aluminum polymer technology, which one will have a higher business potential in future, let's say in five years. The similar question was, uh, what is the main difference between those two technologies? Maybe you can give some details about uh, difference of tantalum polymer and aluminum polymer and answer the question why we will yeah. see most likely both of them also in five years. <laughs> yeah, sure. Um, well, both technologies have the same case size. Um, and regarding the ESR value, the ESR value for AO caps is smaller. So this is why they have an advantage in comparison to KO caps. But they have a more narrow, narrow, more narrow voltage uh, rating as well as uh, capacitance well, um, rating. So there's only uh, one narrow, um, how to say, area where you can where you can use AO caps instead of uh, KO caps. This is actually the difference, but they have both potential and this is why on both technologies we also see the future. Okay, thank you for this one. And um, also regarding our MLCCs, for which MLCCs is the Connect technology available? Okay, so right now, uh, regarding the Kamet products, we have uh, KC Link. So Kamet um, DC Link for also for Snubber, uh, it's a COG technology. We have U2J, which is also a class one ceramic, and we have X7R. But in general, you can say that this technology is, Connect technology is applicable to all MLCCs. Um, the only restriction is the restriction in the footprint. So, um, like not in the footprint, but in the case size. Uh, for very small cases, case sizes, connect technology is not possible to be apply uh, to be applicable. Okay, and then just came a new question um, regarding 4.7 microfarad in 25 volt. Why did you use in your example six pieces MLCCs in parallel and why not use one piece 4.7 microfarad at 50 volt? Um, yeah, I, I could have done it as well, but it would not be only one because I have also to take care of the DC bias. 
and also of the temperature. So even though I would use one, if I have um, another voltage than one volt for the MLCC, the capacitance, especially for X7R, which is a class two ceramic, um, would um, go down. So I would need more than one piece and also this for for some smaller pieces also the price is lower so the lower uh, the, the smaller the piece the component uh, the smaller most cases uh, the price like in general speaking and also depends also on some other things um, and this is why I have chosen a smaller one I would have could have done this uh, consideration also with a bigger one but there still the price would have been higher than f of the other technologies so there's not only one way maybe to an do additional, things. Uh, <laughs> maybe one additional comment from my side also to this topic. Um, this is one of the advantage of the polymer caps because they are very stable over the voltage and uh, frequency until to a certain point. Um, but they have not this behavior like MLCCs. So the main advantage of MLCCs might be the price on the first view and maybe that it's a small size item. But for your final application, you need to check all of your requirements. So is there a temperature situation? Is there something with ESR? And then you need to look deeply into your application. But right. by looking deeply into your application, also with the help of our FAEs uh, worldwide, we can help you to find the best solution. And this is maybe one of the conclusion. Each of the technology we just have seen will also remain in future. And the best technology can be uh, from application to application different. And we hope we could help you. I can see it's now right. exactly uh, half an hour gone. I have no more questions. If you need more information, further information, you can contact us directly or you can contact your local sales or field application engineer. And we will have additional webinars. Please have a look on our webpage. And also we are happy if you could now uh, give a take some time, two minutes, to answer the questions on the following survey. You will see it um, exactly after closing this window. So thank you, uh, Ekaterina, for presenting today, and I hope to see you soon again. Thank you very much. Bye. <laughs>